Are you ready to skyrocket your organic traffic to your website? If you're a blogger or a content creator, then today's product showcase is for you. It's no secret that it gets tougher and tougher ranking on Google with the constant algorithm changes. Today's product showcase is Outranking.io, an AI-powered SEO research tool which can help you research, write, and optimize your content to end up with high-quality SEO content for your website. With their three main modules, you are set up for organic success. So without further ado, let's dive into Outranking.io and let me set you up for success. We are now inside Outranking and I'm very excited to show you their three main modules which will really set you up for success in the organic modules and the organic traffic within Google. First of all, we have the SEO content here where we can create and optimize content. Then we have our SERP analysis and we have the questions. From a UX perspective, I would put SEO content at last because we need to do the SERP analysis and the questions before we start writing our SEO content. But that's just a small thing. First off, I want to show you the questions module here because what it will do is that we'll enter a keyword and then Outranking will find all of the questions asked on the World Wide Web based on that keyword. And that is good because then we can make answer targeted articles. So let's say that I enter the keyword project management tool and I then press submit. Now you can see it's starting to collect SERP data, that is search results data. And based on this data, we'll be able to see what questions are asked out there. And then we need to do a little bit more research because there can be questions that are already answered out there. We need to find the questions that are not answered. I'm not going to show that in the video, but it's just for you to know. It has now loaded all of the questions and it does take quite a lot of time, but it is also a lot of data that needs to go through. Here it is showing me two types of results. It is showing me the related keywords to the keyword I entered and then the Google questions. And the related keywords are of course only questions. So for instance, a question here is, what is a project management tool? That is one question that is highly likely answered already. Then there's other questions such as, what project management tool does Amazon use? Or why use a project management tool? Which tool or technique is used in develop project management plan process? and so on. So you can see a lot of these are great questions that you can answer, but I do recommend you to take a look at the questions and Google them to see whether there are already articles answering these questions perfectly, because then do not spend your time on it. Now down here in Google is the interesting parts, because here it says, if you search for what is the most popular tool in tracking projects, that is a question asked fairly often on, on Google. That's why they're showing it. The same with this one. Is PMO a strategic role for each of these? They have this search for is, and then the question, a little bit unnecessary. Of course, it would be awesome if I could click on it and then I was sent on to Google, but I find it unnecessary just to write it. But here you can get an idea of all of the questions around your keyword that you want to write for your article and the questions which are not answered, I would highly recommend you start answering them in your article for your article to blow up but that is the questions module, extremely relevant for you. Now the SERP analysis over here works more or less the same. Now if I enter project management tool and press submit, it will now collect SERP data. And based on this SERP data, you can see here, we get a lot of statistics and numbers. So for instance here, the length of the words in general here, like the amount of words per article, minimum has to be 439. In average, they are 5,000 and maximum 20, 24,000. This is a bit irrelevant for creating a good article. You can easily create an article on a couple of thousand words and outbeat everyone. It does not have to be like this. It's not the length of the article that counts as what is the best article. But here we can see how many pages are missing meta titles. There are zero. Are there any featured snippets? And there are not. So here there could be a chance for creating an article which could be a featured snippet. Are there questions people ask? Yes, there are. Pages missing, meta descriptions, zero. So it is based on this data, it is a very competitive keyword, but there are still some chances you can still get the featured snippet. And down here, we can see the serve analysis result and it chooses the first two pages. So we get 20 results you can see right here. And for each of these results, we can see the content length, the domain authority, 
backlinks, do follow links and so on. The grade out here is based on what outranking do you find them to. And you can see here the number one project on the search results here only has 2,413 words. It is still a lot, but it's just to show you that it is actually outbeating a lot of competitors with a lot more words. And you can see here number five, 439 words. And that is because it is hitting right on the nail, answering the question that we are looking for, maybe. But you can also see that they get a low grade but they are still ranking number five on a highly competitive keyword. So the grade out there, we need to take a little bit and not really lift to get that up high. Now up in the top here, we have metadata and URL also, and we can see this for each of these search results. We also have the H tags to see, then we can see all of the H1 tags, and this is just for inspiration, do not copy paste this. Then we have the keyword data again for each of these results. Then we can see how many times do they use specific keywords. This is relevant for you to see whether you really need to focus on these keywords or not. Of course, it is still the overall article which is going to help you rank. But here you can see what they use in H1, H2, H3 and so on for their keywords. And this is just a great way to get inspired for your article. Now we also have questions here and this is the questions asked on this specific search term. And then we have other tags in the end here. And this can be a lot of different types of tags. You can see here it's external links, internal links, images, tables and captions and heads and so on. So this is just other types of tags. Now just to show you quickly back in the SERP overview here, if we go down in the bottom, here you can also see the external site links and the related keywords in the bottom. So by doing this SERP analysis, you get a lot of information off your keyword. It is not a keyword research, but you are very close to having it. And you just get so much relevant information for you to really build out your article. So now we have the questions and we have the SERP analysis. So we are now ready to go and build out our article. So we are now in the SEO content module and I will create a new document. You can either choose to create a new content or optimize existing content. Let's say you have an article already on your website and it doesn't perform as you want it to, then you can plot it into here and then you can start working on it. This is very interesting. For now, I'll just create a new piece of content and I'll just enter project management tool, which we've used through the video. Then we have to choose a location we want to target for this specific article and the language. This language is something they've recently added and I'm of course happy to see Danish here. But here they have added some languages, not so many. It isn't beta, so let's see how it will go with that. I'll just keep it in English. And down here we can choose the status, which is just draft for now. And then the tags, if we're using tags. And this is to differ between the different documents. For now, I'll just create this new SEO document for us to get started. In here is where we create our article. And we have a lot of things we need to go through. Over here we have our editor. Here we have our AI wizard. And last but not least, we have our instructions over here. What I usually do is I just start out by generating some title ideas. And this is sometimes a mix, sometimes good. The testing I've done is around 60%. I often get a good title that I can use based on the AI wizard. But here it is a little bit of a mix. I think I'll just go with the last one for now. But here you can see it's not amazing results, but I'll go with this one for now. We'll then press next. And here we can generate the meta description. I'll just press, do be aware here, it often generates too long meta descriptions. So maybe you need to work a little bit with it. But here you can see the ones they generated. And of course, depending on the article you're about to write, the meta description will be changing a little bit. But I will just choose this one for now, which is a little long. It's not using all the keywords down here, but it's using almost all of them. So I'll choose this one and press next. And as you can see over here, we now have our URL, title, meta description and our heading, our H1. So we are now ready to generate an outline. I will generate outline ideas here. And then based on this, we can then generate our outlining. So you can see we got a lot of great results here. I will just click some of these off so we can start with our outlining. So I now chose five different titles that we can use in our outlining and I'll now press create outline. And what you can see here is that we now have a lot of H2s. I actually chose six, I can see. For each of these H2s, we have some different elements we can do. We can either do the concept where we can generate some concepts. I will click on this one for you to see. This means that for this specific section, what is the concept of it? 
the concept we'll just say is allow for collaboration among project stakeholders let's click on that one and when i mean click on it then out here we can develop the concept so you can see over here to the left it is now adding it and writing a little bit we can then choose whether we want to summarize it this is often good for conclusions we can choose whether we want to answer the question in this case it is actually a question so we can choose to answer it and last but not least we can click write for me and this will just write content for us we can click multiple times and it will then write content and you can then read over here whether the content is relevant enough for you or you need to change it a little bit if these concepts are not working for you you can always add custom concept where you write the concept for this specific section because the concept are used for really figuring out what type of content do I need to write in this section and the more precise you are the better results you will get now I'm fine with this section and we can now choose to go to the next step but before we do so I just want to show you up here that we have some sections from the SERP and this is what we did just before in the SERP analysis this is different types of sections that we can also add and work with if we do want to just do be aware of not copy pasting too much it is just a great addition then over here we do also have some extra elements we can work with the hfw and the rearrange if we do want to rearrange some sections for now i'll just keep it as it is and from here it is just to start writing and when you're done with all of the sections i'll just keep this one section for now then what you need to do is you need to optimize the section for more reach this means that we need to use some of these keywords a bit more according to outranking.io and last but not least we need to verify the section keywords and here we can see that are we using all of the keywords correctly or do we need to add even more keywords last but not least we have of course our seo score out here which is telling us whether our title is good enough the meta description the heading the sections we need to add a lot more sections if we need to be competitive again this is a bit of a question that i can't answer 100 percent but it's not the length of the article that is going to tell whether it's going to rank or not. As you just saw before, articles on 400 words can easily outrank articles on 25,000 words. So it is definitely possible. Here you can see that we have great questions. The topic coverage needs improvement. We need to cover the topic better. That is correct. We need to use related keywords even more. And then down here we have the ul is great and the research was based on SERP data so you can use this out here as a bit of a help do not build the article to score a high seo score because it does not guarantee your article to rank but sometimes it can be relevant and can help you to really build out a great article but do remember to only keep it as a guidelining now the ai right here we can also change the instructions for this a little bit let's say that the output length that we are doing right now is not long enough we can then set it up to high which means that we'll get more content out when we press write for me if it is too long we can also of course set it down to low and then we can write for me there are also some quick functions you can use here and then of course as we just saw before we can answer the question we can get some instructions on the featured snippet or a definition i have now chosen 89 characters and it needs to be less than 100 and we can then write a featured snippet instruction here and it will now write out my featured snippet and this featured snippet is in this case a list format where it is talking about how to create a project set the goals who's responsible and so on we can also do it as a definition and this is the tools that you have to really create a great article and of course all of these tools writing are based on gpt3 as an ai tool but they are really working great and i see improvements every day it is really an exciting future ahead of outranking.io moving on to the pricing structure of outranking they consist of four plans and they only differ on the features and it is two features we need to notice here it is the amount of seo documents and the amount of analysis and searches you can do within you can get started completely free if you do want to try out outranking i do have a link in the description down below the competitor to outranking.io is definitely phrase.io these tools are very similar and especially now when phrase.io has added the gpt3 layer then these two are very similar to each other and the way that they work in the flow are more and more the same within the tools 
I'm very excited to see Outranking coming up here because they really do pressure Fresh at IO. And when we have this competition, we will only get even better tools in the future. I do really like working with Outranking.io and the results I have received and achieved within Outranking.io are just astounding. Moving on to the future of Outranking, they have a lot of exciting elements. For instance, they're working on auto-created AI-written full outlining. This means that you can outline an entire article through AI and the only thing you need to do is give it a keyword and help it a little bit along the way. This is very exciting and will save us for an enormous amount of time. They are also working on identifying content keyword gaps. This will help you create content wherever there are gaps within Google and you can really receive a lot of traffic through this. Furthermore, they are working on integration to Google Docs so you can use Outranking within Google Docs and then we'll see a lot of improvements to the SEO score as you just saw in the walkthrough. Furthermore, the last two exciting elements that I picked out is the keyword research tool and the plagiarism checker. These two elements will take Outranking to a new level and I'm very excited to see all of these features implemented. Now the target group for Outranking.io is content creators bloggers, and even if you're new to creating content, Outranking.io is just helping you so much getting started, optimizing your content, and making sure that you always create high quality SEO content, fulfilling a lot of the algorithms that Google has done. Now moving on to the pros and cons of Outranking.io, starting with the pros. The content creation flow is productive. The modules for research works well, their question module is extensive and their step-by-step -step instructions works great. Whereas for the cons, meta descriptions are often generated too long and the generated content for the sections are too short. Using Outranking.io, I have been able to create SEO optimized content and I do see articles rank faster. However, it is still a patience game. I will keep using Outranking.io and I'm very excited for the future ahead. Overall, I will give Outranking.io 4.5 stars. I'm extremely excited for the tool and the functionality within and the overall flow of creating content is just amazing. I would like to see more precise meta descriptions in the generation and more easy flows to write more content per section. But yeah, that is my review of Outranking.io. I hope that you liked the video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions to Outranking.io or other products you would like me to review, please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Let's catch up on the next one.